Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. Thank you so much for joining me. We are gonna make this beautiful baby blanket. Um, before I forget to tell you, it measures about 39 inches by 39 inches, somewhere in there. Um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful size. And it's, I, I made it using loops and threads, soft classic acrylic yarn in those three colors. Um, and you're gonna need three balls of peach if you're gonna make the bear to match. Um, three balls of peach and two balls of each of the other colors. Actually, you're gonna need three balls of peach anyways. And two of um, white and two of mint. And um, I used the Addy 22 needle machine. And for the border, a crochet hook, uh, five millimeters. Okay, so this is an absolutely beautiful blanket. And um, I displayed the bear with it because I have that cuddle bear on my channel as well. And whenever I make a blanket, I actually add a cuddle bear to it um, in most cases because uh, it just makes such a beautiful, beautiful set. So um, you can find that link in the description below or look for it on my channel. Okay, so you're gonna need your 22 needle machine. And um, once you have your yarn, which I'm gonna just make mention of this yarn because um, at first I really liked it and I think I might even mention it in the, in the video when I'm um, starting it that it's working well and I'm loving it. But by the time I got to the end of the project or even into the middle of the project, I was realizing this, this yarn doesn't work the greatest with our machines. So my suggestion to you is if you don't want to take your time and um, be very, patient when you're knitting with this yarn, don't use it. Use use a yarn that is your favorite. Bernat Premium would be better um, for this project. So uh, I, I don't think that I'm gonna use this Loops and Threads soft classic yarn much anymore. Um, I don't think it's much different than the Craftsmart, to be honest with you. And so it's not one that I would recommend 100% in our machines. So thought I would just let you know that. Okay, so once you um, have your, your supplies ready, let's get right into it. We are ready to begin. So if you have your 22 needle machine set up, whether it be your Addy or your center, it doesn't matter. Grab some yarn that is a contrasting color to your working yarn, to your project yarn. And we're gonna add waste yarn to the beginning of this project, okay? So you're gonna put your last white and your first black needle in line with your yarn guide. And then we're gonna cast on by going behind that first black, in front of the next, behind and in front, all the way around. And just let that yarn slip through your fingers. Don't put any tension on it. You don't need you don't need tension for the cast on, okay? Put that into your feeder, just like that. Make sure that that first loop is down over those red teeth. And we're just gonna knit as many rows as you feel comfortable knitting for waist yarn. I'm gonna do seven, okay? It's generally what I do. It's four, Five, unless of course this piece is too small, too short. Six, I think it is, I'll do six. I grabbed one that I've used before, so let's hope it even makes it, there we go, six, okay? I'm gonna open that yarn feeder. I'm going to put that between the last white and the first black. I'm gonna set my row counter to zero. Generally, I do that halfway around my last row of waist yarn, but that's okay because um, we caught it before the row counter changed, okay? So we're going to start with our first panel. We're going to take our white, okay? So whatever your lightest color is, um, you're going to put that into, into the yarn feeder, okay? And we're going to knit three or four needles. Then what I always do is I pull on both of these working ends, just like that, to snug up the tension on those first few needles. So it's nice and even for my project. I want the first four needles to be just as even as the rest of the row. I'm just um, taking some slack out of the ball here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna knit around. And we're going to do 20 rows of this color. Okay? So just keep going till you get 20 rows. I've got my yarn in between my two fingers like this. I have no tension really on it. I'm just maybe very, very light. I'm just letting it slip through my fingers. Okay? And I like to keep it in my fingers so that I can feel for knots, etc. And I'm going to go at this slow speed because I know that this is the speed that my yarn likes <laughs> when it comes to this machine, okay? Um, and, it, you know, if I, if I do the speed that the machine and the yarn um, cooperate together with and take the slack out of my ball, then uh, I will prevent the tuck stitches as much as possible, okay? Not to say I'm not going to get some, but... I try not to because I watch. I watch as every needle goes through. I concentrate on my on the barrel a lot. I don't um lift my head up and look at other things. I I watch because I want to make sure that my stitches are beautiful and that I don't miss something. Okay, so I'm gonna go around till I get to 20, and then I'll see you back. I've made it around. I have 20 rows done. I'm going to cut that yarn tail, 
and I'm going to open the latch. I'm going to put it between the last white and the first black. Then I'm going to take my second color, okay, my peach. And I'm going to put that into the, and you can use whichever color variations you want. You have to figure that out. But generally, um, if you do um, one panel in your lightest and your second um, lightest color, and then the second panels will be in the mid-tone and the, and the darker, all of these, I would say, are rated in the lighter category. But the, well, the peach and the mint will be mid-tones, I guess. But um, that's how you want to do it. You want to take your two lightest colors and that those will be your first panel and every other panel. And then the one, the second panel and every other panel after that will be the, the um, darker one of these two and then the darkest one that you've got, okay? So that we're going to, oops, I almost forgot to do my javelis join. We're going to put that between the last white, the first black, then we're gonna swing that back to the other side of that white needle. Okay, and we're going to knit both of those on that white needle. We're going to just drop that into the center. And when we take a project off the machine, we are going to we are going to tie those. Okay. And we're going to knit another 20 rows. Now you can let me take some slack out of the ball. You can knit three or four rows and then tighten your your jogless join. I'll show you. Um, we'll do that in just a second. But I always like to take it off the machine. I'm going to do one more and then I'll show you. I like to take it off the machine and uh, lay it on the table and do it that way. But if you're one who doesn't like to do that, then what you're going to do is you're just going to... Let me just pull a few more needles. Oops. You're going to just take them like this. You're going to put your finger in there and you're just going to pull until you feel it give. And see, I don't like doing it that way because I, I don't feel I have the control. But if you're adamant about tying them before you take it off, the machine then then you can do that you just pull them one direction actually and then you'll feel it slip into place um and you can do that after every jogless join that you do but i'm gonna do them all when we take the the panel the um tube off the machine and we'll do it together okay so knit another 20 rows your row counter will say 40. okay making sure i have slack on my ball and when i get to 40 i'll see you back all right, so I did 20 rows of the peach. So now I'm at row 40. I finished row 40. I'm going to cut off that peach color, open the latch, put it between the last white, the first black, and we're going to switch colors back to the white. And then I'll do the joggle join with you, and we will. I'll set you off on your own. I'll give you further instructions in one second, okay? So it's both of these are between the last white, the first black. We're going to swing it back over that white one to the other side, and we're going to knit three or four needles. Then we're going to take both ends of that working yarn, the white one, push that down under the divider there, that one too, and give it a little tug. And if you didn't see that, back it up a little bit and um, watch how that snugs up in there. And it just makes all the difference in the world in how your um, stitches look when you take it off the machine, okay? You're going to go ahead, you're going to knit 20 rows of this color, okay? So watching as every, as every needle passes to make sure it picks up that, that yarn and takes it down. Um, between those red teeth and that loop is, is staying around those red teeth and doesn't come up as it knits because then you'll get a tuck stitch, okay? So I always watch when I know that the yarn is sometimes a little difficult to my machine. And this one works, it works great, but it isn't, it isn't one that my machine loves. It likes it, but it doesn't love it, okay? So anyways, and that's generally just with the lighter colors. The darker colors seem fine, okay? So go ahead, knit 20 more rows of this white. Then you're going to switch again. 20 rows of peach, 20 rows of white, 20 rows of peach, going back and forth until you have 200 rows completed, okay? So um, you will have five panels of each color. So you'll do white peach, white peach, white peach, all the way until you get to 200 rows, alternating every 20 rows. And when you get to the end, I will see you back. Um, when, when you um, start to touch the table. If you don't have a hole in the middle of your table like what I have, that it goes goes down and then I roll it up um, on itself a little bit down there. But just keep pulling it up like this and popping it in the center. Um, and it's going to get a little wide because it's 200 rows. But just keep doing that so that you have the tension around your barrel here good. If this hits the table and it starts to buckle up like this, um, then you're going to risk dropping your stitches off those red teeth and uh, having a, a dropped row. So um, Roll it up from the bottom or um, cinch it up with a, with a hair tie or, or however you want to do it. It's not as easy to roll into a donut on the 22 needle as it is on the 46 needle. So um, go ahead.
Go ahead, keep going, and alternating every 20 rows until you have 200, and I'll see you back. Okay, so how did it go? I'm at row 200, okay, and I've alternated every um, 20 rows. And now we're gonna end with waist joints. You're gonna cut your tail, leave a little bit longer of a tail so that, because um, when we close our ends later, um, you're gonna need it to be a little bit longer. So not that long, six or seven inches, okay? And put that between the last white, the first black. Then you're gonna take your waist yarn again, pop it in there, shut the latch. This, this one you don't have to do a jogless join on, of course, because we're taking off the waist yarn. So they're both in there. We're going to then knit as many rows as you're comfortable with. But if you are like me and you're going to knit all the panels like this that you need um, before you close the ends, then do a few more because this end unravels really quickly. And if they're jostled around and stuff, you don't want it to, to come off and then start losing your, your um, working rows, like the rows from your project, okay? So generally I do seven rows of waist yarn, but I'm gonna do 10 or even 11. Just gonna let it go. Um, because I piled them up in a little pile <laughs> and uh, I just don't want it to come loose. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. Okay, it's tight coming out of my ball. Well, that looks like a lot, but I'm going to just do one more for good measure. It's just waist yarn, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to cut that off, open the latch, put that between the last white, the first black. Then you're going to rotate your handle so that your barrel goes around, and on the second time, it lets go of those stitches. Often you have to help that last one or two, and that's okay. You just pop them off just like that. Then you have your project, which I can't fit through that hole because of the little donut that I've made. Okay, so you're going to go ahead, and you are going to make six of these, okay? So um, work on one color, get them all done, and then work on the second color, or you can work on work on them alternately and then put them together and then keep going that way. I like to do assembly line. I just find that it works better for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knit six more of these panels, and uh, or pardon me, five more, because I need six of this exact one that we just did, and then we'll move on to the next color. All right, so for our next color of panels, um, we're going to need to make five of these, okay? So we made six of the other ones. We're gonna make five of these. We're gonna take our waist yarn. We're going to cast on behind that first block in front and behind, just like what we did for our other color, okay? Oops, ay ay ay. Again, you don't need as many rows at the beginning of your project because this doesn't unravel. <laughs> it literally doesn't. So I'm going to go. This is a piece of waste yarn that I've used already, so there should be seven rows on there. Six or seven. And I'm going to stop right there because I'm not going to make another row. I'm going to cut that off. Open my latch. Put that between the first white and, or the last white and the first black. Then I'm going to grab my peach. The peach is what we were using in our last project and you know it really doesn't matter which color you start with um, between this one and the other one or on your first panels between the white and the um, peach because you start one color and you end with the other color so either way if you start with peach you're going to end with white so it um, makes no difference but um, just for um, teaching sake I'm going to take this peach one and I'm going to knit three or four needles then again, we're going to pop those down under the dividers. Give this a little tug to, to straighten out the um, the row. And then we're going to have changed our row counter on our last row of, of waist yarn, which I did not do. So now I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to be, it's going to be counting a little bit different from me. Instead of counting the row that I'm on, it will count when I'm finished. But I know that that's happening, so I'll be fine that way. Um, I, I prefer to change it before I start because I like to know what row I'm actually on. But it's okay. I'm going to knit 20 rows of peach and then I'm going to switch to my mint, my mint color here. I'm going to mint, um, do a jogless join and I'm going to do 20 colors of mint. Then I'm going to do 20 and 20 all the way till 200. Same thing we did with our first panel, but we're using our next two colors. The one, the darker color from our first panel and then um, the remaining color that you have. Those two are going to alternate every 20 rows till you get to 200 and we're going to make five of these tubes, okay? So you've made six of the white and the peach. Now you're making five of the second color of tube, which is for me, peach and mint. So go ahead, make all 11 tubes and I'll see you back when you're done. 
All right, friends, so if you are finished making the tubes, <laughs> you will have six of these peach and white ones. Oh, so soft and so beautiful. And you will have five of the other color, okay? But you can see where this join is uneven there. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to do our jogless join um, fixer upper part. <laughs> so let's take one of our pieces. I've got that one in my hand, so I might as well take it. Let's put these aside. And we are going to, we have to fix the both ends like that as well. We have to close them off. But we are going to, first of all, take our piece and we're going to stretch it widthwise. Every tube that comes off your machine, you want to do it, do this too. Okay. It just lines it up and feel the difference of the fabric before you do this and then feel it after. And you will be shocked at how soft it, get, it becomes. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, um, find which side is the end okay so the end is the one where that unravels really easily like that um, I want to pull that end through so it, it gets less jostling so I'm going to put my hand in this end because it starts to undo except for your fingers are going to get all caught around those <laughs> those yarn ends that are in there but you're going to just slip your hand in there just like this wouldn't that be a beautiful leg warmer it would be a beautiful leg warmer. <laughs> and you're going to grab that like that really carefully, hold it tight so it doesn't unravel, and you're gonna pull it through. Just like that, okay? Now we're going to pay careful attention to this because we don't want it to start unraveling. And we are going to, you know what, some of them, I, um, as I was knitting, generally what I do is I make I do an assembly line I'll make them all and then I'll do the next step to all of them and then the next step to all of them but um, I closed a lot of these ends just just the one end um, so that I could still turn it inside out uh, I, I did a few and then I closed a few of the ends just because I don't want to risk them coming apart so if you feel you need to do that then go ahead and do that too okay so here we have all of our color change ends we are going to Take these two yarn tails, okay? Here's where you see that the, we started here with a color change in this row, it goes around, comes around, and then it's it's off-centered. See, it, it's this first um, row, or beginning of the row is lower than the end of the row, and we wanna make that the same. So we're going to, that's why we do the jogless join. I'm gonna put our fingers above and below that row and press down just so it holds it in place. Take these two, give it a tug. It seems like you're really doing damage, but you're not. As soon as you feel it pull it into place, you're done. And then look at that. And you can just play with this a little bit and, and make it nice. Just like that. But then we've got this little stitch that's a little tight in there. You do not have to do this, but I want you to see this for the video. Because you, you won't notice that on the other side. But I want you to see for the video here. That by doing that, you pretty much line that up. Okay? It, it's actually perfect, um, but just by the way it's it's falling, it looks still a little bit off, but it's actually perfect. So then you take these two, and I'm going to show you when we're done all of them, I'll show you the other side. And you can decide whether you like this joint or not, okay? I'm going to cut this off, I'm going to go to the next one, look at the difference, okay? You will love this joint, you will, I know you will. And if you've watched my videos, you've seen it before, this is just where I had to add um, yarn, okay? So I'm going to push that down, I'm going to pull on that. And you see that that comes into place then I just use my finger and I just smooth it out a little bit and that row is perfectly lined up okay then when I tie this knot I am very careful not to pull this real this part really tight because I already tightened it I don't want to tighten it more okay it's where it needs to be and the second knot I can pull tighter and I'm going to work that all the way down the color changes I'll do one more with you okay just like that give it a pull Work it with your thumb and your fingers just a little bit, okay? Give it a tie, and in no time, you will be doing these so fast, I can whip down a row here with no no trouble, okay? That's how you do it. You're going to go ahead and you're going to do that to every one of your color joints on every one of your tubes. <laughs> it doesn't take that long. Put on a good movie or some good music and uh, have fun, and I'll see you back in a little bit. Go make yourself a coffee and, you know, maybe grab a cookie or something too because that's that always helps to speed up the time. <laughs> okay, so go ahead, finish that off, and I'll see you in a bit, my friends. So beautiful.
All right, I'm on my last one. I finished it. And I didn't grab a cookie, but I did grab chocolate. And yes, I'm being careful that I don't get chocolate on my project. Oh, I could just eat chocolate all day long, every day. <laughs> I hide it in my craft drawer downstairs so nobody sees it. And I just <laughs> uh, sneak it whenever I feel like I want it. Not that I have to hide that I'm eating chocolate, but you know, you don't want people to see when you're doing things in excessive amounts. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to stretch those out one more time, just on every row change, color change row. You're gonna put your hand back in there. And you are going to grab that end, bring it through one more time. Put it back where it belongs. And we're gonna have a look. Okay. When you're playing around with your fabric a lot, like what we're doing, you wanna just treat it nicely, stretch it out again, as many times as you want to get it all in order. Let's see, where are those color changes? Can you see where they are? Jogless joins. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. And then I'll tell you where they are. I can't even tell what I feel for the knot. But look at it. Friends, it's perfect. Like, you can't even get it more perfect than that. I don't even know where it is. But if I feel for the knot, it's right there. Right there. It's perfect. My favorite join. You know I get excited about it. I absolutely love it. So now we're going to grab our um, five millimeter crochet hook or 5.5, .5, whatever you have. Don't, don't grab one that's too small because then it's hard to work the stitches. And we're going to now grab this, take the side where it's unraveling the fastest or the easiest. And we're going to take those tails, make sure they're out of your work. Grab your stitch markers, which for me are bobby pins. You're going to take your waist yarn I had a comment on my channel um, just yesterday asking, what's the purpose of waist yarn? And I directed her to watch any of my videos that have a flat edge and she'd see why. Um, but if you're watching, this is why. Um, because when you use a contrasting color, um, you can see all these top loops and these are your top row of stitches that we need to catch to make a straight edge. If you did not have waist yarn, um, you wouldn't be able to do it as easily. I mean, you could take a circular knitting needle and, and remove, um, remove your project from the machine and have your cord going through there. Or you could just use one row, one, one strand of yarn and, and weave it off um, in the same way. But most of us like to use more thickness there because it's easier to hold, easier to see. And it just, you know, that's why we use waist yarn. So then you'll just watch and see what we're doing next. So the, the stitch that your tail is coming out of, which is this one, we're gonna put a stitch marker in there. It's gonna be our first stitch. You're gonna look to the left of that and then this loop that's attached to your tail. So if I was to pull on that, that's this strand here. That's my last one. Okay, we're going to put our stitch marker in there. We have 22 stitches on our project. Make sure that those tails are outside. We have 22 stitches on our project. So we're going to count around to 11 and 12. And then we know we're halfway around. And we're going to have a perfectly straight edge that matches up with the straight edge on the other side. So one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That didn't look right, so I'm gonna do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. This is 12, okay? So this is our very side on the opposite end. So we're gonna count that as one that's on the hook. Then we're gonna pick up this top row and we're gonna work it through that loop. So that's two stitches worked. Go down to the bottom, pick that one up, put it through the loop on the hook. That's three, go up to the top, four, and you wanna always count because if you miss one of these loops and um, skip over it, once you take your waist yarn off, then that row will start to un unravel. So you wanna make sure you count. So five, six, seven, up to the top, get that very top row, eight, nine, and go all the way across and I'll meet you back at 21. Okay, so I've done 20 stitches. Now, this bottom one will always, if you're counting, this will always be um, 21. And if it's not, then you've missed something along the row. And you can pull that up, 
put your hook under that stitch, work it, that's 21. Sometimes this one is hard to find um, because it's from pulling on here, it gets a little hidden. So that's why you can just pull up on your bobby pin, stick your hook under there, that's 22. Yarn over, pull it through that loop, and you have successfully made a flat edge beautifully on your project. So my friend, whoever asked that question, this is the reason why we do it. It makes it very, very easy to make your edge, okay? And then we pull this off. Now I should do it, what Tina in our group showed us. I'm gonna show you a little trick. When you have a long end like this, you take it and you put it on your, on your needle and then you weave it through here. Just push your needle down through those stitches and out here, okay? Anywhere. Pull it through, but don't pull it all the way through. You still want to loop up at the top here, okay? So I've got my loop. You can take that needle off. I've got my loop there, but the reason why I do that is because it gets this yarn tail out of the way, and you can pull this off without, without tangling around it. It's a brilliant, easy idea, and you will find brilliant, easy ideas, and then you just pull this out when you join my Facebook group because we have brilliant people in that group who share their fun ideas. So Tina, thanks for that idea again. We love it. I'm going to just wind this up, set it aside because I can use this again. I generally wind it as I take it off, but um, I just wanted to do it fast for the video. Okay, and then there we have it. We're going to go to the other side, which is the beginning of our project. And it's a little bit different to find the stitches, but easy. Okay. Now this waist yarn is coming up this way. The other one was going down. It's coming up and where it's coming out of that loop. See, if you pull on this, this yarn tail is coming out of this loop. So you're going to put your stitch marker in that loop. Then you're going to go to the left of it. And where your working yarn tail is right beside it is the top loop. That's where you're going to put your stitch marker. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to count around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Number 12 is going to be number one on your hook. Then you're going to go up to 11, work it through. So you've worked two stitches down there. That's three and four and five, six. Doesn't matter if you go over your stitch like me or under like that. Doesn't matter. All you're doing is bringing that loop through so you can go under or over. I always grab it from the top because I think it works a lot faster for me. Okay. And you continue down the row until you've got all 22 stitches worked then you yarn over with this little tail here pull it through the loop fasten off and then I'll show you how you remove the waste yarn at the beginning of your project because it's quite different all right so there's our beautiful edge on the other side okay now for this one you want to roll up that waste yarn until you have that very top row and you know you're on the top row when you grab that on either side of a loop and you can rock it back and forth through that loop you see that loop then you know you're on the right side okay and you're going to go a little closer to the yarn tail. You're gonna pinch that stitch. You're gonna pull that top row through, just like that, okay? You're gonna go down five or six stitches, roll it up, make sure you're on the very top stitch, pinch it, pull it through. Just have to do this for the first row. Pinch it, pull it through. Pinch it, pull it through. If this tail was long, I would do the same thing we did on the other side, but it's very short, so I don't have to. And then once you release that first row, you can go ahead and pull this out just like this. And you've got a beautiful finished edge. You're going to go ahead and you're going to do your jogless join ties on the inside and do your ends just like this on all of your tubes. And when you come back, we will join together, okay? Fun, fun, fun! All right, so we have all our panels done. The ends are absolutely beautiful. Proud moment when you see them all stacked up beautifully and you're ready to put together. <laughs> so we're gonna take one of each, set the others aside. So let me take these beautiful folded things off the table, set them aside, and we're going to begin our join, okay? So you will notice that there are there is a peach end on both of our panels, okay? You wanna make sure that that you have them opposite each other. So we've got white and peach now at this end. And up at this end, we have green and peach, and that's what you want. We're going to go ahead, we're gonna put the peach one 
gotta pile these on my knee because it keeps pulling, the weight keeps pulling it off the table. Our peach and white is going to be the outside panel and our green and peach will be the second panel, okay? So this is the first, this is the second. Now you're gonna notice that you have a drawstring or a tail on, on both of them, okay? From when you, when you sewed it off. You wanna make sure that one of those tails, doesn't matter which one, is on the inside because we need to have a tail to finish, to close the very edge together when we're um, at that point. So make sure that you um, that you have that like that, okay? Then you're gonna take a stitch marker and you're gonna put it on the front of your panel, just like this, because we wanna always make sure we're doing our braid on the same side panel. So then I when I add this next one, once we do this one, then I'm gonna add this next one, making sure the peach is at the top just like that, okay? Making sure there's a drawstring in the end. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it over to here, okay? That way I know that this is always the front, okay? The top. And then my braids can be going the same direction. Because um, if I do these two and I mess it up and then I turn it around and I go the other way, like this, and then I grab a green one and I put it on this side, my, my the right side of my braid is gonna be on this side, whereas on this other one, it's gonna be there. Does that make sense? I feel like I just like talked a mile a minute. So, but anyways, the moral of the story is you're going to put a marker on the top front side of this panel. Then when we get to the next panel, you're going to move this over here so that we know that this is the top front side. And when we add our next panel, um, we're going to add it this side and, and work on this side to make our braid, okay? I hope that makes sense. I don't know, maybe I didn't explain it well enough. And if I didn't, I'm sorry. Ask me in the comments and I'll explain it further or I'll show you when I add my next panel, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're going to flip this up on its side, so that's the front. We are going to make sure that we have the wide part of our V of our stitch facing to the left on both sides. It's much, much easier to do your mattress stitch that way, okay? And so if, if it naturally falls like this where you've got your, your point of your stitch going to the left, then just give it a slight half a row turn and you'll get it lined up the way you need it to be, okay? So the wide part of your stitch is going to the left. Then all you have to do is smooth out one section at a time. Some people get overwhelmed with this part saying that they lose their place wherever they're at. Um, how do you stay on the same row? Well, you do that by just doing one small section at a time, taking your time to work it out just like this, okay? Line it up beside each other and you should be able to stay on a small section like that, okay? Now, even if you've got a solid, two solid panels that you're doing, work small sections at a time, then smooth out another small section and you you will be able to, to stay on track, okay? There are ways out there that people will put a, like a, draw, a string in, or a cord in there or whatever to hold your row up like this and then go to town. You can do that too if you prefer. Um, it's just an extra step that I prefer not to do, um, but it is a good idea if you need it. Um, the point is you have to stay on the same row. Do whatever you can to stay on the same row, but my suggestion is you take just take a small section at a time, you smooth it out, and then you hold it with your fingers, okay? But what we're going to do is we've got to make sure that we go into the same stitch at the top to start, okay? So I'm going to start counting from the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This is 19 and 20 is way squished up there. So I'm going to start on 18. And, or 19 if you can see it really well, and then we'll use this tail to close it off later. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, okay? So I'm going, because we want to start on the same stitch, um, and I know that's this one here. So I'm going to go into that stitch, pull up the loop, go push my hook into that next stitch, pull up the center loop that's there, put it through the green, okay? Then I'm going to count. This is the I'm gonna just look up in my camera here. This is the space that it's coming out of, so I count that one, two. So essentially, I'm overlooking, I'm going over this one, I'm missing that one, I'm going into the next one. Pulling up that loop, putting it through the loop on my hook. Here's where it came out, so I count one, two. Okay, so one, so I'm missing that for next bar, going into the next one. Missing this next bar, going into the next one. And working it, okay? Smoothing this out if I have to. So one, two, one, two, one, 
two, one, two, just like that, all the way down, and you're getting a beautiful, beautiful braid. I use a five millimeter hook for this. Um, you could use a 5.5 millimeter. I wouldn't go much smaller because then you get a really small braid. But the thing is, is um, make sure you're doing every second loop, not every loop. If you do every loop, it's way too tight and it, it takes away from the look of your, of your project, uh, the neatness of it. So every second loop, like what I'm showing you. Now, some people have commented in my Facebook group and in other Facebook groups, saying one tube is longer than the other what do I do because you know it's, it's longer and, and you know if I hold this just like this this one looks longer because look at this looks too short and this looks too long it's because of the way you stretched it when you came off the machine okay all you got to do is make it even because if if you did the exact same amount of stitches of rows on each panel no matter what it looks like when you stretch it out off the machine like this if it looks all wonky and now at the other end it's going to be much longer right because I've stretched this one more you just match up your stitches and it works because if you've done 200 on this one and you've done 200 on that one it has no choice but to work out if you've done each section the amount that you're supposed to do it has no choice but to line up okay and so if one is stretched longer than the other once you start connecting together it's going to come together okay so don't start cutting your panels and panicking because one's longer than the other it's simply because of the way it's stretched after it comes off of the off of your machine again making sure that you have equal rows equal sections and you're fine okay so then you keep going all the way down one two and you just keep going skipping every other one now there's only one break in the rule that I make <laughs> okay so one two and I'll show you when we get to where the color change is if there's a knot there and you can't get under it I guess there's two rules if there's a knot there and you can't get under it you just take one okay and then I'm going to take one on this side and then I'm going to continue going two and then this row lined up. You see that? That lined up beautifully. But sometimes it still doesn't line up because we're knitting in the circular round. So every time you get around to the start, it jumps up and you have that jog in your um, in your row so that it can change to the second to the next row. And sometimes that is what messes us up when we get to where co our color change here, even though we're going the same amount of rows. So I'm gonna just continue down a little bit more and I hope it happens here so I can show you what I do. Okay, so one, two, and two, two, two. Skipping every other one. Just stick with me here and hopefully this one won't line up quite as nicely because I'll show you how you make it line up. It's one you're always taking to except for if it doesn't line up, okay? And if it doesn't line up because there's an extra stitch on one row, one, two, like here, see, I've got one, two, three, one, two. Then I'm gonna take one here, I'm not gonna do two, I'm gonna take one, and I'm gonna take one, two, there. I do whatever it takes to line that up. So I only took one on this side, I took two on that side. And I'm gonna continue down the path and it's gonna happen where I'll make it up somewhere on the other side. I don't make it up right away because it's gonna happen again um, because of that jog that we have when we, do, when we knit in the round, okay? If we were to stop, like when we crochet, you stop a row and then you chain one and you keep going, you have a perfectly straight um, join, but when you knit in the round, you don't. You always have that little jog in the color. So we're going to keep going. And now, because I'm perfectly even, I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to keep going down. Okay. If I am if I am straight on my colors, on my joins here, then be even though I just did one, it's going to help me stay straight all the way, like the rest of the way down, except for there's going to be probably another jog in the color somewhere, and I might have to just do one on this side. Um, but that's the only times I do one, is if I have to miss the knot, or if I have to do one so that I can keep my rows completely even like what I showed you right here. And when you just work from one section to the next, keeping that even, then concentrate on that next one, by the time you get to the end, um, you're gonna be able to do the same thing and it's gonna all somehow work out in, in the wash, okay? Because look how straight that is. Look how straight this is. And um, so you just gotta really, really watch when you get to your color changes. So let me just do one more for you. Because we want it to be beautiful, right? 
making sure that that's straight. Okay, so here, here it goes again. One, two, three, one, two. Well, actually, this is the third one. There's a knot there. Um, but I want to make sure that lines up. So I'm going to take one here and I'm going to take two there. And then I'm perfectly lined up. Um, again, it was on the same side. But you got to just trust me. So I don't have to do this whole row down with you. You got to trust me if you concentrate on one section at a time. And you have to do just one stitch to get this to line up. You will work it out at the end. Okay. Um, you just got to trust me on that because there's there's the same amount of stitches on each side and uh, each one of our blocks is the same amount of numbers. You just want to make sure that you're concentrating on one block at a time. Okay. And if that means taking one stitch from one side just so that you can line that up, that's okay because it's going to work out in the end. It just, it just does. <laughs> okay. Because there's going to be somewhere along the line on this side that I'm going to have to take one, just do one on this side where I do two on this side. Um, and it'll, you know, if you're just concentrating on one block at a time, it'll all work itself out and you'll have a beautiful, beautiful row. Okay. So have fun, my friends, keep going and I'll see you when I get to the end. All right. So I'm up at the top here. I'm going to finish off I can get in that tight stitch there. It gets a little tight at the top. Come on. You can get it. You just have to work at it, but you can get it. Okay? And then I'm going to then leave this the way it is, and then I'm going to go ahead. Well, I'm going to string over that, take that yarn there. I can fit it through that loop. That would have been a good time to do that too. Okay? Um, let me grab my needle. At any point, I was actually going to gonna sew it up and then grab the loop, but we'll do it that way. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to take the top loop here and that top stitch there. And I'm going to seam it together. Okay, and again, we're going to have um, a crochet edging on this, so we don't have to be too particular about how how we've uh, finished it off. Just don't pull it so tight that you're gonna have a pucker like that, okay? Have it nice and make sure that you that your yarn end is um, slack enough that you just make a nice even join so that it goes straight across, okay? Just like that. Now I'm going to tie another knot. Take this and hide it into my work. Now I'm going to show you what I mean by that stitch marker, okay? Why it's helpful. Cut that off. Oh, there's my other needle. Hiding. Put this down. We can see that this is the front, okay? That's the front. This is the back. I don't want to take another piece like this. And so and and sew it this way because then my braid will be on the wrong side. So that's why I go ahead and I put my stitch marker, which is easy to see anyways. But the main thing too is you want to know which is the top because um, these V's are all going down in this direction like this, right? So if you start in the end, other end and come up, then they're going to go this way. So you want to always start on the same end. So that's why the stitch marker helps you. You're going to go ahead and you're going to put it over now into this one. We know that this is the top. This is where we're going to start on this end. And... Uh, on that side. So I'm going to grab myself another peach one. Make sure that your peach is at the top, not your white. Make sure that you have your tail on the inside. We're going to go ahead. We're going to fold those up like that. Make sure that that yarn row has your wide end going to the left, same as on this one. And you're going to do the exact same thing, okay? just like that. You're going to join this panel and when you're done that you're going to move your stitch marker over to here and you're going to continue alternating just exactly like this. So your top row will always be peach, green, peach, green, peach, green, peach, green, peach all the way to the end. Okay and so continue joining all of your rows exactly as I showed you how to do this one finishing off both ends and get all 11 panels put together and then we will work on the crochet border. Okay, friends, so 
there we have it. Isn't it beautiful? You know, when I bought these yarn colors, I was in the mall, and I might have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, I can't remember. <laughs> I was in Michael's, and I, I was trying to piece together three different yarns that would look nice together, and I went up to this young mom who had a little boy in her, in her shopping cart, and I said, would you put these with a girl and a boy? And she goes, absolutely. So that's how I chose these three colors, and I think they look absolutely beautiful together. I just love it. Okay, so again, you're going to see some spaces where um, it's not completely joined up, even though you, you did your job to do it joined up, but that's because it's a braid, and this braid gives slack both ways. So it doesn't have to be straight across like with an invisible join. Um, really, it is straight across because that's how we made it, um, but with the movement in it, it's going to go off a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Don't let that get to you because it looks absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to see yours please show us in my Facebook group so now we're going to do a crochet border if you don't know how to crochet and don't want to learn <laughs> you can learn on my channel but if you don't want to um, you can just leave it like this or you can put um, a small fringe yes I have done fringes on baby blankets um, you just do a shorter two or three inch fringe and it looks great um, you can just do pom-poms on all four corners um, a small pom-pom on every corner be beautiful um, or you can join me and we're gonna do a crochet border so to do that you're gonna put a slip knot on your hook okay just like that make sure that the right side is facing up because when we're crocheting we want to make sure that our work is is the right direction that the right side isn't on the back okay so what we're gonna do is the hook is the um, loop is on your hook and we're going to start anywhere along the top I'm gonna to start right in this braid here really anywhere. I'm going to put my hook in. I'm going to yarn over, pull it through, and pull it through the, the loop on my hook. Put that back there. Now I've just joined. Now I'm going to chain one. Okay. And we're going to single crochet in every row. So now in that same space, I'm going to go in into there and make a single crochet. I'm going to find my stitch marker. Where art thou stitch marker? I'm going to put it in there because with single crochets, it is hard to see the first one. So take my advice, put a, put a slip stitch marker in there. Now what I do along the, the ends like this, um, where my rows are going vertical, is I go into this first one where you see the wide part of the V is at the top. Okay, so the point is down there, the wide part is up here. I'm going to go into there and I'm going to do a single crochet. I'm going to go into that next one that looks exactly the same, so that next row um, or the half a row right there, the space between the two rows is what I'm trying to say. Um, we're going to miss. So we're going to go into that very next one where the wide part of the V is up. I said we're going to go into every second um, row, but we're not. We're actually going into every row. Um, and here is the point down here. Here's the wide part up here. That's how I know where to go into. Go straight into it. Do a single crochet. Okay. Find the next one that's got the wide part of the V at the top, which is the very next row. And we're going to do single cro crochets all along that top okay just like that some people start in the corner some people start their their thing at the bottom i just pick a place and start because it really doesn't matter okay and there we go go in i'm just so thrilled we're at this point in the blanket you know what when people say it's done on a machine so it's not handicrafts that's a bunch of malarkey don't don't listen to that kind of stuff okay <laughs> because it still takes it still takes so much effort i'm going right into that braid it still takes effort and it is uh it takes work and it's it's just another way of knitting okay um and i i think it's handmade well i know it's handmade because my hands are making it and it's taken a long time <laughs> okay so where's that next one right there and the next wide part of the V is right there and right there. So I'm going right across into the wide part of this, the V. So the row that where the, where the, um, let me see. I think you know what I'm saying. The row where the stitch is the widest at the top. Okay. So the point is here and the width is there. It's like in a V. I'm going into every one of those. Okay, that should give you 11 stitches right across because this is 22 around. 
Um, it might give you 10 because of the braid taking up. Um, but regardless, just go into every one where you see the wide part of the V is facing up. And when you get to the end, I'm going to meet you back and show you what I do for the corners and down the side. Okay, so I'm at my corner. And when you're doing your, your crochet, um, make sure that you do it um, with even tension. Don't pull it too tight. Just let it slip through your fingers and get an even tension there. Um, so many times if you see a border on a blanket, you see that it's all bunched up like this. It's because it's too tight. Let it just slip through your fingers and um, have a nice even tension to it. Make sure that it's even as you look at it across. If you've got one side that's tight and one side that's loose, then um, take it apart and, and do it so that it's the same tension, okay? And so we're going to um, come up to our corner here. I'm gonna go right into the corner. Do a chain one, or pardon me, a, a single crochet. Then I'm gonna chain two, and I'm gonna single crochet right into that same space, okay? So I've got a little corner to happen in there by that chain two. And we're gonna work into that corner with our next set of stitches, um, but that's how we do it. So let me take that out and show you one more time. Okay, so we're up to the corner. We're gonna insert our hook, do a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet back into that same space. Then when we come down the sides, they're a bit different, but they're easy because you can see all your stitches on the side here. You're gonna follow that same row down. So make sure you don't twist this and go from this row to this row, okay? You find that row that you're using, straighten this out. And it doesn't matter which way the Vs are going um, on your stitch, as long as you just have the same row all the way down. Then you're going to go to every second one. So I'm going to miss this one. Actually, for, for um, this one, no, I'm going to miss it. And then I'm going to go, I was going to say I'm going to do this one and then start my trail. But I'm not going to because I'm going to just slip it across into that second one from, from the corner. And then I'm going to miss this next one and go into this one. If you want to snug it up close to your corner on both sides, um, you can do that. But I think that I'm just going to leave it... Um, Leave a, leave a space in between, a stitch in between there, okay? So now you'll see there's one, two, single crochet, one, two. Oops, I got a red thread snugged around there. I'm gonna have to remove that later, okay? So every second stitch, single crochet. Then when you get to your corner, you're gonna do single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then you're going to go into the wide part, wide V, part of the V down the bottom, just like you did at the first, at the top. And uh, then up that second side, you're gonna do this. You're going to miss one, single crochet in one. Miss one, single crochet in one, picking up both bars of that stitch, okay? So miss one, single crochet all the way down, okay? So friends, go ahead, do that, and I'll see you back when you're done. Go all the way around. You're doing the same thing, okay? When you get to the other side corner, you're going to do, do a single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that same space. Up your sides here, you're going in every second stitch. And at the top and the bottom, you're going into, the, into every row where the wide part of the V is at the top. Okay, that's all you're going to do. All the way around for your first row. And then I'll be back to join with you and we'll go on to our second row. All right, my friends, you can see that we are at the end of the round. Okay, I'm going to put one more in there. Then I'm going to put one more in the braid, just like that. And then where my bobby pin is, I'm going to slip stitch to join. Okay, so right into that stitch where my bobby pin was, my stitch marker, I'm going to yarn over, pull it through, and then pull it through the loop on my hook as a slip stitch. Then we are going to chain two, okay? From there, we're going to move on to our second row. In that same stitch, we're going to yarn over, we're going to do a double crochet, okay? Just like that. We're going to take our stitch marker, we're going to put it at the top of that double crochet, just like that, and we're going to double crochet in every single crochet. So in every stitch from the row before, we are going to double crochet all the way around, okay? And when we get to the corner, we are going to once we get into this single crochet before our corner, we're going to double crochet in that one, and then we're gonna go into that loop that's right there that we made. That's our chain two loop. We're gonna put a double crochet, chain two, double crochet in that corner. Then we're gonna go over to the next single crochet, okay? And we're gonna put a 
double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, all the way down, okay? In every corner, putting double crochet, chain two, double crochet, okay? Easy peasy. Same thing we did with single crochet. Well, no, single crochet, we were missing every second stitch here, so never mind that. But <laughs> we're going to go into every, every stitch, okay? So I'm going to continue around. I'll actually, for those of you who still need to see the corner, once I get there, I will pop back on and show you what I do. If you know what to do, then just keep going around until you get to the end, and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I'm coming up to my corner. I have this single crochet and this one, and then my chain two. So I'm gonna double crochet into there, into the next one, then into that chain two space, chain two, and a double crochet back into that chain two space. Then you're going to have to just pull this apart a little bit and you'll see where that bar comes down here. This is the first single crochet that you're going to go into, okay? So yarn over, double crochet into that, okay? It's a little bit hidden because of the um, double crochets, but you'll find it just by looking for that bar. And that's what this corner is going to look like. Beautiful, okay? So you're going to finish that all the way around, putting a double crochet into every single crochet and into the corners, double crochet, chain two, double crochet and when we get to the end I will see you back okay my friends I'm coming up on the end here I'm going to finish off my double crochets then where our stitch marker is we're going to put our hook into there I gotta come down here okay we're gonna put our hook in there we're gonna yarn over pull it through that stitch and pull it through the loop on my hook and I've done a slip stitch to join okay we can pull this out if you want to do another row of double crochet you can chain two and then I, I I don't count this chain you can go right into that space do a double crochet go right into the next double crochet and do the same thing you were doing all the way around and you'll have a second row of double crochet I'm choosing not to do that but I thought I'd give you the option I'm gonna just chain one so I slip stitch to join I chained one and then in that same space, I'm going to single crochet. I'm going to mark this one because that, that'll be hard to find later. Mark that single crochet, okay? Then you're going to chain two. You're going to single crochet in that same space. Okay? So you um, single crochet, chain two, single crochet in that same space. Then you're going to skip one. So I'm going to skip this next one here. I'm going to single crochet into the next one. I'm going to chain two and single crochet into that same space, okay? Then I'm gonna skip the next one. So skip one, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, skip one, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, skip one, all the way around except for at the corners, okay? Chain two, single crochet, skip one, and that's what you're gonna get, okay? Isn't that pretty? It's just simple, but for this, this is such a petite looking blanket. I just wanted a simple border um, to go around it, so that's, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see you when I get to the corner, and we'll do the corner together. All right, so I'm at the corner. Um, it works out that I skip one and I'm at that one right next to there. Um, if this is the one that you end in and there's one left there, then that's the one that's between here. Um, and that's fine too. So it doesn't matter which one of these you, your um, patterning ends up on. Um, it, it's okay either way, but I'm gonna do um, my stitch into that one there. Okay, because I don't have one in between now, but but that's okay. Then into this cent this corner, I'm gonna go single crochet, chain one, or pardon me, chain two, single crochet. Then I'm gonna chain one, and I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna push this over with my thumb, okay? I'm gonna do single crochet, chain two, and single crochet, okay? And then I'm going to skip this next one that's there and go into the next one, and I'll show you the corner in one second, and repeat the pattern. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet. I'm gonna do one more. Miss one single crochet, chain two, miss one, okay? And this is what our corner will look like, okay? 
it turns it nice and beautifully because we've done two in the corner there. If you think that that's too wide for you, you can still, you can do just um, a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then repeat the pattern. And it does work too, but I like how it, how it turns the corner like that. So um, I'm just following the patterning that I did with the double crochet too. And for me, that is how I prefer to do it. But you do it how you like the look of it. Um, and then you just continue down. But when you're doing your second set in here, you just take your thumb and push the first one over a little bit so that you can make room for that next one. Okay, so I did um, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Then I did one chain. So chain one, then single crochet, chain two, single crochet all into the corner. And I think it looks fantastic. Okay, so that's how you're going to do your corners. This is how you're going to do your sides. You're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same stitch, skip one. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet, skip one. Okay, and you're going to do that all the way around. And when you get to the front, to the end here, all you're going to do is in your stitch marker, you're going to slip stitch to join. So you're going to put your hook in there. You're going to yarn over, pull it through that loop and through the loop that's on your hook and cut it off fasten it off and hide your tails. That's all you're going to do. But I will come back and show you. Um, but if you don't need to see that, that's what you're going to do. But you should still watch the end of my video because I always talk nice things to you. <laughs> no, I want to show you it at the end and um, and uh, just spend a little bit more time with you after, after I show the ending here. So um, every time I come around, I see this little um, space here that kind of bugs me, actually. It's because I did the double crochets in there and it's spreading it out. There's two... Um, you can see where the where the ends are. Um, so I, I might play with that a little bit. All I have to do probably is just put my hook in there and play with the braid, loosen it up and bring it up, loosen it down. So if that happens to you, you just fix it by playing with it and I'll play with it on the other side too and, uh, and it'll be fine. Okay, so go ahead, finish that patterning all the way around and uh, we'll see you when you're done. Okay, friends, we are almost at the end. What a great feeling, hey? To have it almost done, chain two, single crochet in the same space. And I'm gonna go into this one, chain two, single crochet in that same space. Then I'm gonna find my stitch marker, pull up on it, put my hook in that loop, then I can take this out. See how beautiful these little um, bobby pins are, okay? Pull it through and through to slip stitch to join. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull that through, grab my scissors, pull that through and tighten it. And there you go. You know what? All we got to do now is to grab my needle. This might not be the best needle for this work, but that's the one that's closest to me. So I am going to grab it. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to go down through here and through this stitch just like that and I'm gonna go over to this white side instead of to the peach side because then you won't see it as, as good see if I can do this with my left hand nope I just cannot work with my left hand I don't know how about you but I cannot do it I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna go through these stitches here to hide my tail and I'm gonna go back once Pull that through, cut it off. I'm gonna do that with the other tail that's there that was from the beginning. Okay, I'm gonna hide that. Same way. Okay, I'm gonna hide it into the white because I'm a stickler with hiding the one color into the same color if you can. If I couldn't have, then I would have put it over in the peach, but I can, so I'll just do it here. And it's fine. Pull that through, cut it off. And friends, we have, let me just see if I can tear this off a little bit. We have an absolute gorgeous border, just like that. Be proud, you've accomplished a beautiful, beautiful blanket. Here it is. All right, friends, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and 
I would love to see your finished blankets. So if you've made one, please show us in my group, Koala Knits and Knacks. As a matter of fact, show it in other groups too and, and post the link and get the pattern out there. That would help me circulate my channel and I would appreciate that. But thank you so much for joining me. It's always a pleasure spending time with you. Um, I am just uh, loving this community of of friends that we have created through this channel and so thank you so much for being a part of it don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and uh we'll see you in the next video take care my friends and have a wonderful day